Good morning, everybody. I'm Lindsay Rumpt. I, if I haven't met you or you're not familiar, I'm the executive director for LPC. And I just wanted to give a couple of updates really quickly. Um, if you have been watching our Facebook page or checking your email, you are likely aware, but I wanted to uh, make note of it just in case you haven't seen, but our membership renewal period is open. So for those of you that are LPC members, please renew your membership sometime between now and June 1st. If you're not an LPC member and are interested in becoming a member, um, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me or check out our website, or you can just renew online. One thing that we are doing this year is in accordance of COVID-19 and so many people working remote, um, we did, or I did set up the website to be able to renew memberships completely online and to pay online. There was a membership renewal letter that went out the first week of April that has a detachable slip on the bottom if you need a hard copy for your accounting people. Um, but otherwise, you can do it online on the LPC website and you'll notice it says join or renew and there's a member information form. I really would appreciate it and need everybody who renews their membership or joins to fill out that form. That's the information that I will use to compile the membership directory for this year. So in order to renew your membership, I'll need both your dues payment and then also that member information form filled out online. If you would prefer to not fill it out online and do it via PDF, please just give me a shout and let me know, but it should be fairly easy just to fill in all of the blanks on, on that form online and hit submit. And then you can pay online or you can mail online check to the LPC office. There is an additional fee to pay online for credit card processing, but um, either or is fine. Um, both work. The other thing I wanted to make note of is that we did extend the deadline for the LPC awards contest. The deadline had been set for Friday, April 17th, but we heard back from some members that there was going to be a little bit of an issue trying to get entries together just because so many people are out of the office and working remote. So um, we extended that a full month to May 15. And so um, you'll see that that's reflected on the website. It's also reflected already on submittable. All of those in, those categories um, have been moved back to May 15 for entries and that's um, at midnight. If you also missed it earlier this spring, we did announce some changes to the contest this year. Um, those changes are to the rules and to the categories. So if you haven't looked those over, I encourage you to do do that before you enter because we did consolidate some categories and enter or create some new ones. So if you have questions about that as well, please feel free to give me a shout. Um, shoot me an email, lindsay at livestockpublications.com or give me a call here in the office. All that information is on the LPC website. But um, two really big things for LPC this spring. The only other thing I'll mention is, is we I have received some questions about AMS for this summer. We are still on track to have Ag Media Summit July July 25th through the 29th in Kansas City. We have not canceled or postponed yet due to coronavirus. And at this point, uh, myself, Tina Bowling, our conference manager, and Samantha Kilgore at AAEA, um, and then our steering committee, we don't anticipate needing to cancel by the end of July. But as we all know, this is a pretty fluid situation. So we are monitoring it. There are contingency plans that we are working on should we need to make a change. And as soon as we do make a change, we'll let all of you know you might have seen um, some news go out that the host hotel, the Lowe's in Kansas City, did not open in April as scheduled, but the hotel does have business on the books for May, and they are planning to open in May. So we know the hotel will be ready to go to host us um, if we do go ahead and still have the event in July as we're planning. Um, but like I said, we are working on contingency plans. If you would like to sponsor or know somebody who's interested in sponsoring, please um, send them my way or to Tina at AM. And we'll have some contingency plans for those sponsorships as well, should AMS plans have to change come July. But um, that's pretty much all for me. Uh, if you have any questions or need anything, please give me a call here in the office or shoot me an email. Always happy to help where I can. Um, and um, otherwise, it's great to see you all. Looking forward to chatting some more toward the end of this for the after party, which we announced um, as something new for this month. We thought it'd be a fun little way just to do it around the board and check in with everybody since so much. 
so many of us are working in um, new environments, I guess, so to speak, working remote and dealing with some different things with all of the coronavirus fallout. So i um, looking forward to chatting some more later toward the end. Please stay on for that chat. I think it'll be fun. Thanks, Lindsay. We appreciate you. I think Jennifer's on. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Sorry. I apologize. I don't know if you guys have been watching the news, but it's a little crazy if you're in the pork industry right now. And so I feel like I'm drinking out of a water hose. So I apologize. But I'm super excited today for um, our coffee and collaboration. So I just wanted to first like um, thank all of you guys for joining us today. We appreciate that you're here. But I also want to give a big thanks to Shell and Maggie because they've been flexible with COVID and kind of rescheduling and changing things around. And so um, today I'm pleased to introduce Shell Terrell. She's the managing editor of Gulf Coast Cattlemen and the Beef Master Cowman. And Maggie Malson, who's a freelance writer and photographer with Maggie Malson Communications. They're both um, excited to share with you guys some of the things that they've learned from working from home. Um, I love the, is it all it's cracked? up to be because I know um, as someone who works from home now as well too that it is not always easy and so these two are well versed in overcoming challenges from working at home and trying to share some of that information with all of us to help us do our jobs better during this time and so it's um, even more timely and relevant than we thought it would be a few months ago when we asked you guys to join us so thank you so much we'll turn it over to you guys and, and just kind of a reminder for those of you who are new um, I don't know if this was mentioned yet, but there's a chat at the bottom of your screen. And if you guys want to pull that up, feel free to ask questions throughout. And um, if they see them, they may answer them as they go. But otherwise, we'll make sure that we get those answered for you at the end. And we really encourage this to be a conversation. Um, they don't really want to just sit here and talk at you, but they're going to share a few thoughts to get it started. So with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. All right, good morning. Thank you for having us. Maggie and I are excited to be here this morning and talk to everyone about this. It's, you know, looking back in hindsight, it's amazing. I'm not sure who came up with the topic, but um, it is extremely appropriate. Um, we pray that everyone's doing okay during this coronavirus um, time and, and hope everybody's staying well. We're glad to provide some tips from working from home. We've each done it for quite a long time. And so hopefully we can offer some insight into doing this. I know that so many of y'all are already working from home and have kind of had to fly by the seat of your pants, so to speak, to make it work, especially if you have children at home and um, shuttling that around and phone calls and meetings and whatnot. And so um, we're going to kind of look at uh, what's worked for us over the years, kind of how we got started and um, go from there. Maggie, do you want to say anything else before we get going? Um, no, I think that's great. I'm trying to get these slides to advance. There we go. So yeah, let's just jump right in. All right. Well, I'm just going to give a quick little background. I don't have to go through everything. Um, I'm a graduate of Texas Tech, have a degree in ad communications, and uh, went straight into the magazine business um, after graduating from college. I was uh, hired by Gulf Coast Publishing, which we published two magazines, the Gulf Coast Cattlemen, is um, a monthly publication and then we also do the Beefmaster Cowman which is the official breed publication for the Beefmaster Breeders United and so I started out as an assistant editor we had another editor at the time as well and then transitioned into the managing editor role for both publications in 03 and did that um, from San Antonio that's where our office is located and then had the opportunity in 2006 to move to my hometown of Mason Texas about a hundred and 10 miles northwest of San Antonio and have worked from a remote office since then. Do we want to go to the next one? There we go. Uh, Gulf Coast, just real briefly, um, primarily covers the um, southern livestock industry. We're from Texas across to Florida. We go up in the Carolinas, in the Tennessee. We're um, primarily geared to the commercial cow calf producer. We run a lot of commercial and purebred um, advertising and uh, cover management articles, industry news, anything you can think of um, for the cattlemen. We try to cover the whole United States when it comes to topics, but obviously our primary voice is for those producers along the Gulf Coast. And then, like I mentioned, Beefmaster Cowman goes to all the um, Beefmaster breeders that are part of Beefmaster Breeders United. 
So my role as managing editor, which I know there's um, quite a few of, on, of you on here that um, work for publications. Obviously, it's coordinating the yearly editorial that we run in each publication, interviewing sources, writing the articles, taking pictures. Um, I work with a lot of freelance writers, which I'm so thankful for. So if any of y'all are on today, thank you. We appreciate you so much. Um, I do uh, page layout and design, work on anything related to our media side from social media, event coverage. Um, we have a phenomenal staff. We're, we're small and strong. Uh, we're owned by E.C. and Margie Larkin, and there's four other th of us. I had a little picture up on a different slide that worked there. So I work alongside our production manager and graphic designer to coordinate with the publications uh, printers. And then one interesting note that we do now that so many of us work um, remotely is I'm kind of the office person one day a week. So I know y'all get a lot of calls forwarded from the office to you. Well, I'm the person on Tuesdays. So if you call our office in San Antonio, I'm the one that's going to answer. So that was kind of um, another option that you can do when you work from home. You can be that point person that people call. All right. Thanks, Shell. So um, my background, I graduated from Kansas State with an ag communications degree, uh, interned with the Hereford World, and then um, right after that, uh, I moved to Parma, Idaho. Um, I had gotten married, and uh, we came out here to reach with my husband's family. So at that point, I actually began my freelancing career and working from home. Um, I worked for the Idaho Cattle Association in their office doing um, just some database work. And then right um, just a few months into that, I was contracted to do um, their monthly magazine. Or at the time it was a quarterly magazine. So I spent 13 years working for ICA and um, all of that I worked in my at-home office. And then um, I, would go to Boise periodically to, to kind of check in. So I had a lot of experience, um, raised all of my children while I was doing that. So I learned a lot about how to, to manage my time at home um, and try to balance being a mom and also getting all of the work done. We went from a quarterly magazine all the way up to producing 11 issues a year. And then um, I finished with uh, doing a centennial book for them and that was my last big project and then after that um, I went back into full-time freelance work um, which is what I do currently and um, during that time I had a few other freelance projects I kept um, going. Sorry. <laughs> my daughter is printing so here's some real life work from home challenges. Um, I think we're done. So a lot of the same work I did with the magazine um, that Shell had mentioned, and then um, right now it's a lot of submitting freelance work and working with editors um, across the country. Okay, well, um, aside from our current um, situation, we're all pretty much working from home because of the coronavirus. We kind of thought we'd start um, with, how do you start this? What if, what if you have the opportunity to work from home? Um, how do you, I guess the first thing you need to do is what we consider is you need to approach your employer. And to do that bef before you, you need to step back and kind of make a list, you know, identify the reasons why you want to work at home. Um, really kind of go through with yourself, you know, what questions are you going to get asked? You know, what are the pros and cons? How are you going to make this work? Think about all those things that your employer is probably going to ask you when you had that initial meeting um, about working from home. I can tell everyone because I got approval to say this, my publisher is still not thrilled after all these years. He loves having everybody in the office and it, he's precious. And so um, he wanted me to be sure to mention that. It's still not his first love, but <laughs> we've been able to do it successfully. Um, all of us in the office have. And so um, anyway, another thing to consider is um, that transition 
for me, it was um, what type of technology. I'm moving to a, a rural community, so what type of internet speed did we have? We didn't have great internet back in uh, 2006 when I moved here. It was better than dial-up, but it wasn't what obviously we're enjoying today. Um, and then you need to consider that open communications with your coworkers, and we'll talk about that a little bit more on another slide. But what I did and what worked for me, and not everyone is able to do that, I traveled back to our San Antonio office once a week when I first moved back just to get that um, transition in there to see how that's going to work with everyone and um, then as the years went by I scaled that back um, significantly um, to where we are today and I go in more as an as needed basis but what I did in that initial conversation um, with my employer was um, ask about a trial period and I just and be prepared for the outcome because they may not want to continue it. I just said, you know, let's try it for several months. I really love my job. I think that we can make the best of this and let's see. And just be open and honest about, you know, what they're looking for from you um, and what they expect and, and meet those expectations and, and be prepared though for what could happen if it, if it doesn't work in the end. And so, um, but I do want to mention what I said here about proving yourself. It, it is an opportunity, it is a blessing to be able to work um, remotely. And so one of my key points, and I know Maggie will mention this too, is you is going the extra mile and overperforming. And so um, I'll mention this on a, on a following slide is, I never want anyone waiting on me for too long to get things done and putting them in a, in a bad position. So I try to always work hard to meet the expectations of my coworkers. Did we lose our slides? Sorry, yeah, I had a screen come, or a notification. Sorry, go ahead. Let's see, do we have the next one? Um, yeah, and I was going to mention, so obviously right now dealing with COVID and coronavirus, a lot more people are working from home, but in the future, hopefully, um, you know, we get back to what is our new normal or normal. Um, and these opportunities might still be available. So, um, you know, Sh Shell worked in an office and then became a remote employee. Whereas I started my career working at home, so it was a little bit different. Um, I had to lay out those expectations with my employer as far as the work, but it was a contract position before. And so I think as a freelancer, um, a lot of these things will still apply. Um, it's just a little bit different in, you might not have this obstacle of worrying about, you know, are you gonna be allowed to, to work remotely? <clears throat> well, I guess we'll highlight some of the um, opportunities in working from home. Obviously, uh, aside from having children in the background, if they're home from school, it, there is, it is a quieter office setting. The phones aren't ringing off the hook in the background. There's fewer interruptions, at least for us. Um, there's that flexibility in your work hours. I find myself, especially now, hopping on at, you know, 5.30 in the morning, maybe sending emails or, or checking things, uh, working late. Obviously, y'all know that you can work through lunch if you need to or work on the weekends. And, and there's pros and cons with, with that as well. Um, working for laptops are great and Wi-Fi can save the day. It's so true. You can hop and go, um, take your laptop with you out in the pasture if you need to, to help your husband with something or um, anywhere you need to be. You can still be accessible with that laptop, live with the laptop. Um, flexibility has always been important um, for us in our office. You know, if you need to go to a doctor's appointment, if you need to run up to school to a kid's activities, if you're on a committee and they're having a meeting at 1.30 in the afternoon, you know, you, you make those things work. You make them work around deadlines, um, but, but we just strive to make that up. We, I really want to point out that we do keep fairly set work hours for our magazine. Um, someone is reachable throughout the day. And I think that is important for, for a lot of people, especially with your coworkers, that they know how to reach you. They know that you keep that communication open between each other a bit. Um, and they know that if you're, if you're gone for a while, you're going to get back with them as soon as possible. And you're going to make that time up, you know, however you have to, whether it's early morning or late at night, um, 
I just think that, that being trustworthy and demonstrating reliability to others is all part of that work ethic. And I think that's even more paramount um, when you work remotely. Um, you just, you know, have your priorities in line. Um, like I mentioned, you know, and, and don't abuse it. It's like we have, and everyone else does, has deadlines. We have to have certain days of the month that we get things into the printer and into our coworkers and, and, and there's other people relying on you to meet those deadlines. And just because you work from home doesn't give you, you know, a laissez-faire attitude about those things. And so, um, I, I, like I mentioned before, I just don't ever want to negatively affect one of my coworkers' jobs by not getting my job done on my end. Well, we talk about challenges, and I'm sure we can talk in our Q&A about some more um, pros, obviously. And Maggie, jump in anytime you want to um, with this. Um, working from home, it's obviously um, there's a lack of direct one-on-one -on -one contact, you know, that spontaneous walk in someone else's office and ask a question, um, getting a quick reply. Um, those kind of things, they're not necessarily available. So you have to plan that out and think ahead. And um, I'm sorry, my dad is coming by to say hello. He doesn't realize I'm on a meeting. Hi. <laughs> He's a former ag teacher. He understands this, a current county judge who's having to do Zoom meetings as well. Can I call you later? So I apologize, y'all. Um, let's keep going. So um, you never know. Here we go, Maggie. Isn't that the truth? Your child printer, somebody walking on the door. You never know what's going to happen. Um, there is that feeling that you can always be on call. Right, Maggie, that, that you do, some people feel like they can reach you at any point in time. And, and really the sick days, is there really an excuse for sick days where you, if no one is seeing you, you can sit at your computer and still get your work done. Um, so you have to think about those things um, as well. And I don't know about others, but I'm, I'm pretty good technology wise to a point, but sometimes you have to solve your own technical issues or call someone. We have a, a Cheryl in our office. Our graphic designer is kind of the technology guru for us. So we call her and, and she's pretty good. But um, I put a little note in there about communications. When I first moved back, that was how we communicated with one another was through AOL Instant Messenger. So you can tell how long ago that was that I started working remotely and how far we've come um, since then. Um, another point uh, about challenges is allowing distractions to affect your work. And that that's a good, that's really hard. Um, Maybe someone's walking in on the door, but you just have to find a way to manage around those distractions. You have, might have to step away to get some things done and then come back and refocus on the work that you're doing. And um, another two points are proving that it works. And I mentioned that before, going above and beyond to assure your employer and your coworkers that you're doing your job and um, that the goal is to make the company successful. And, um, and show them that working remotely through what you're doing is beneficial for everyone. And then another point is to not forget to increase your knowledge and boost your skills. So LAPS LBC obviously offers wonderful education um, and opportunities. There's other skill building ways you can get involved, networking, all sorts of things that provide the opportunity to boost those skills that sometimes um, you just don't want to forget about if you're working from a home office. Thanks. So um, here I wanted to offer some more tips kind of from my experience working. Um, so setting expectations and communicating with the employer about deadlines. Um, so again, I have kind of worked, um, I, the contract that I had, I worked um, with ICA. So I had an executive director basically that I answered to. And when I first started, um, I was doing all of the advertising sales, layout, writing, all of that, and then moved out of the, I didn't sell ads the entire time we contracted that out as well. But um, it's important whether you're working with a, a whole team or if you're working by yourself to set up those um, expectations and to know um, when you'll be available. There were times when, um, and this has changed for me over the years. I found that when I worked for the magazine, I pretty much was available at any time. I would check email. Um, 
at all hours. I would respond at all hours. Usually it was because I was working early in the morning or late at night, but it's important to kind of set up what, um, what your employer, or who you're working for expect in terms of your availability. Um, and then more recently, in the more recent years, I have um, made myself less available in terms of um, when, when I will respond to things, and I'll get to that a little bit more, but um, in, in terms of deadlines, setting up and knowing when your deadlines are, but also creating your own deadlines for yourself. So for those who are just learning to work from home and, and figuring out um, how to manage those distractions and whatnot, it's important to, to set your own deadlines within the parameters of when that work has to be submitted, just so that you make sure that you're you're for sure meeting those. Um, you know, simple things like setting an alarm to wake up and go to bed. Again, um, I had babies, small children, who um, I would usually work when they were sleeping. And um, and for the most part, I worked the entire time with my children home. I didn't have full-time daycare. Um, there were some days where they would go. And, and you have to figure out what works for you in those situations. Sometimes people who work remotely still, you know, are able to have childcare during the day or, or whatnot, but figure out um, a system that's going to work for you in that. And again, I'm kind of a night owl, so I tend to work a lot late into the night, and that has changed um, through the years as well. As I'm getting older and deciding that I need more sleep than I, I used to, then um, I usually will get up earlier and, and spend a lot of time when it's quiet uh, in the mornings. Um, again, uh, getting up and getting ready in the morning. You know, these are simple things and a lot more of this is related to what's going on now and, and trying to, to adjust what we're doing um, in the, these days with coronavirus. But if you're used to getting up in the morning and going to an office setting, then obviously starting your day like that is a lot easier and feels a little bit more like normal. Um, I will admit I've gotten plenty of work done sitting in my PJs all day, but for the most part, I do like to get up, get my day going with, um, with exercise and, and ever, things like that um, before I come into the office so that I'm really ready and prepared to get to work. Um, one thing, too, that I learned uh, was setting office hours, and some of these tips we mentioned um, when we were we postponed this, um, I had said that it was important to set up office hours, and that's related to being available to your employer or to whoever you're working with, as well as, um, for me, it helps with my kids and my husband. Um, I... I want to be able to leave my office uh, when the kids get home off the bus and um, spend some time with them in the afternoon. And then I'll come back into the office later after everyone's gone to bed after dinner. And just having those hours set up so they know, you know, mom's door is closed. I need to, you know, be doing my work, um, that kind of thing. So that's, that's helped me um, be able to set up those office hours and also be able to separate work from home. Um, as Shell mentioned as well, when you're working at home, you kind of feel like you're always working. And I felt that for a long time and have learned to, to try to create a little bit more balance. So I still get the work done. I just have um, decreased the, the amount of um, time that I feel that I am constantly on. There's a way to to put on your, I guess, you have to find a way to balance being um, a spouse or a parent as well as uh, being an employee or being someone who's, who's doing their work from home. Um, with that, having a dedicated workspace, I thankfully have the luxury of having a home office, um, but there are times where I have worked um, in my bedroom, standing up, I'll go to a coffee shop. Obviously, that's a little bit different now, but or even at my dining room table, whatever you need to do in terms of um, helping yourself be productive and actually get the work done. So either that dedicated workspace, um, but being flexible and letting yourself um, 
find other places in your home um, to be able to get some of that work done. Um, another thing that I learned was uh, trying to do the most important work first. So instead of checking emails um, or social media first thing, you know, depending on how related that is to your job, for me, that has changed. When I worked for the magazine, um, checking email and making sure that I was responding to advertisers, communicating with them, um, any of the writing submissions we had coming in, I, I checked email a lot and was available through that. Um, now, as a, as a full-time freelancer, I don't do that quite as much. If I have a writing deadline, if I have interviews, any kind of that work, then I do that work um, in the morning when things are fresh, when I can reach people and, and get that work done first. So find you have to find out um, kind of what works for you in terms of getting the most important work done. Um, Another thing for if you're just getting started working from home, I find that it's helpful to track your time in what tasks you're doing. So um, in addition to the writing, I have photography clients. So I spent a little bit of time um, figuring out how long it took me to edit photos, how long it would take me to edit videos. And so then I can um, use that information to kind of help me figure out um, when I need to be doing that and how to time block that time, how long it was taking, um, which leads me to my other tip as far as setting a timer or time blocking tasks. And it seems really simple and, um, and I, I still use this trick of setting a timer when I need to, to get certain work done, especially writing. Um, so that I can limit distractions. I shut off any notifications, I shut down email, there's no social media up and I just set the timer and I don't get a stop until the timer goes off. And um, that's uh, something that I've, I've gotten better at doing and it's, it's worked. It's a way for me to, to make sure that I'm getting that important work um, done in the time that I wanna get it done. And with that, I think time blocking is another thing that uh, has been helpful, um, especially if you have other people, a spouse or children who are at home, setting up time blocks for you know one to two hours. This is the work that I'm going to be working on, taking a break, um, having another you know time for either taking care of helping kids with school or doing a Zoom call or whatever else it is, but setting up some blocks of time in order to, to get strategic about what work gets done in, in those moments. And then, like Shell mentioned, it's important to schedule breaks. Um, we all, especially if we're spending a lot of time at the computer, need that time to get out, get some fresh air, um, just get a little mental break um, will help in um, kind of with your peace of mind and and helping be more productive. So um, one thing that I also had kind of gathered some information, um, I don't work with the team presently. And when I did, we only, it was just basically, um, we communicated through email or phone calls or texts. Uh, but these are some, um, some resources and I'm hoping in the Q&A and the after party people will chime in about how they've used this. So these are just ones I've collected from my colleagues and peers in the industry, um, different resources for staying connected and, and kind of working together remotely as a team. So Shell, if you have um, anything that you want to add to those, um, and like I said, hopefully others will chime in in our chat and Q&A after that. Okay, we just compiled um, a good list of key takeaways for um, what we feel work, has worked for us to be successful to work remotely. Obviously, um, first and paramount is the trust of your employer and meeting and exceeding the expectations that they have um, um, to allow you this opportunity. 
to, to work remotely. And so it is a gift and you, and see it as such if that's, if that's how the situation unfolds and, and that's really important to keep that there. Keep open in communication with your employer and your coworkers. And that's just part of that schedule and, and your deadlines and making sure everyone is, is getting everything done they need to get done for each other. Um, self-discipline and self-motivation. Maggie talked about, you know, setting, blocking out those times, you know, if, if that's how you, if that's how you work, you know, sit down and, um, and be disciplined and, and check those, that list off that you need to get done. And, and sometimes even on those days that you don't feel like doing it, but you know that, um, that you have to just try to find that motivation. Maybe it is taking that break, getting up and exercising first or going outside and enjoying the sunshine for a little bit, exercising during lunch, um, whatever it is to kind of boost that motivation a little bit to get those tasks done. And um, remain accountable for your work. Obviously, you know, we're in an industry that that is filled with integrity and professionalism. And so that's obviously important to apply to, to what you do remotely. So keep that in mind. Keep a schedule if possible. Your routine is important. Um, Maggie highlighted the things that she does in the morning. I'm kind of that way too. I, I get up and I try to get a workout in if possible, but I get ready. You know, I may not see anyone other than running to the post office or something for the day or at the time picking kids up from school, but I try to get myself ready. Um, and it, to, for me, that worked works great more than anything. And I feel more productive when I'm kind of set and ready for my day. Um, and that making that availability um, paramount for me, especially um, when I have coworkers needing to reach me for things to, to be available. Um, any other thoughts, Maggie? Um, no, I think that really sums it up. I'm, you know, looking forward to the chat and answering any other specific questions or hearing what other people, what, what you're finding is working for you. Um, again, my, it's kind of changed over the years, you know, what working with um, a team in an office uh, versus working solely on my, my own. But um, I found that there's some really great advantages to all of it. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to visit about it today. Awesome. Well, we do have a question to get you guys started here. I'm going to welcome more. Um, but to start off with, um, Katie asks, how do you go about adding additional freelance work as needed? I've noticed that online resumes and portfolios are different than they say back in 2000. How important is social media for you, such as LinkedIn and Facebook? Okay, I guess I, I'll answer that. So when I first started, um, before I received the contract, I did freelance work. And um, so I had a couple magazines that I would write for. Um, and then as the magazine, as the work with it became greater, then I decreased that freelance work. And then once I finished that, I increased the freelance work again. Um, fortunately for me, a lot has been through word of mouth and networking. Um, in fact, I credit all my involvement with um, LPC and some other industry groups with helping um, create that network. And I think that's important. To, to reach out and establish um, some contacts with uh, people at different magazines or different companies so that um, they know your work, they know um, how you can, you know, the kind of work that you do and the person you are. Um, and then as far as social media, for me, that's, it hasn't been my main tool for getting more freelance work. Again, it's really been networking with people and knowing, um, you know, they know my work and they know my abilities and being able to pass that on. But I think that um, having an online presence with social media and an online portfolio uh, is definitely important, more important these days. And just presenting your work, um, the kind of work that you're doing and uh, can, you know, it definitely can't hurt you to, to have a better presence in that. Shell, do you have any thoughts on that? 
Well, I guess my situation is a little bit different. I work with freelancers. So for us, um, we are just usually sent writing samples and, and maybe um, people that they've worked with in the past, um, that, that kind of deal, um, w including contacts through LinkedIn and uh, limited social media stuff, obviously, but um, that's pretty much how we primarily connect with our freelancers. Yeah, I think that's interesting to be able to have both perspectives there. Anybody else have any other questions? We're at, we have about four minutes left if there's anything else. Well, I just wanted to know in the little chat question that um, Jennifer mentioned that L that EC it was an LPC Hall of Famer. So I want to plug that. That's our publisher. Um, Gulf Coast was a charter member for LPC and EC did receive that award, which we're all proud of for him. Yeah. Well, we well, I'll give you a little more time to think. Oh, there goes one. Oh. Thanks, Casey. Do you use any social media blockers to keep your focus? So I admit I do not have any notifications for social media on my phone or my desktop. So I just, um, I mean, I, I do manage some pages, but for me um, personally, I I use, there are um, notifications that come into email, but I will shut down my email if I really need to get stuff done. But I've turned, I do not have any notifications for social media. So um, I, I guess I would say, yes, I do, because I don't have those notifications, but it's important for me to, to not have those um, because I probably check my phone way too much anyway. So I would just shut them off. I don't know of any particular ones. Um, Hopefully, if other people use them, then they'll chime up in the chat. But for me, I just know that I, I don't need all those notifications. So the only ones I get are usually email or text messages that come through. And that's the same for me as well. Email, so I can keep track of anybody's pop-up. But if I'm work, working on a story, like Maggie said, kind of block, close out the program and block everything out. But um, I don't keep Facebook open during the day. And so those types of pop-ups don't come up on my computer. Okay, anybody else? Well, I wanted to make sure I let you guys know that our next LPC Coffee and Collaboration will be on Wednesday, May 20th, barring no other crazy happenings. Um, and so that we plan to do that at 10 o'clock again, Central Time. And we're gonna be talking about interviewing tips from with Jennifer Carrico and Joanne Pipkin. So we're really excited because I think we all run into interviewing uh, being a very big part of what we do. And I love hearing what other people, how they approach it and things that they've learned. Um, I always feel like that just kind of re-energizes me to ask my questions a little bit differently and kind of grow as a writer myself. Um, with that, we're coming up on 1045 and I just want to say thank you guys so much. I think this was a very, um, great and timely topic and really enjoyed getting the chance to hear how your lives and how your careers work at home.